Hello friends and welcome. Today we'll be looking at designing this alarm clock. Uh, on this right side is the design I got on Dribble and I've decided to use the design to uh, create my own prototype. Right here on the left, I've made some little adjustments to the design uh, but eventually the final results will look very similar to this design on the right. My own design is just to know the specification to follow. And uh, this is how the results will look like eventually uh, when we run it, so when we run the UWP application. Alright, without wasting time, let's get started. So I have Visual Studio open here. I created a new project called it Alarm Hub. Uh, the thing I've done is to import my phones right into the folder so let's get started the first thing we're going to do is to install two plugins and also update our Xamarin forms plugin to the latest version so the first plugin we're going to we're going to install is the pancake view Okay, and the next plugin we are going to install to help us is this SketchUp plugin. We're going to select the SketchUp or views of forms. And lastly, let's update the Marine Forms plugin to the latest version 4.5. Okay, now that this is done, let's start our design. But right before that, uh, I want to go to abdozami.cs and export my font. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to see how to use embedded fonts, you can check the link in the card above. So now that this is done, let's go to the main page of Zamel. And right here, we're going to start our design. So we start with grid as a parent container, then uh, right inside the grid, uh, we're going to create a uh, pancake view. Uh, we need pancake view because of the uh, gradient at the background, as you can see in our design. So I have a pancake view, and in the pancake view, I have I've set the background gradient angle to 300, and all the gradient stuff. Uh, okay, so we have a pancake view and we have our gradient set right here. And in the pancake view, we now have a grid. The grid we want to divide into two two rows. Uh, we want to take the clock and we want to take the the alarm information. So we have. A grid with two rows here divided into two equal rows. Let me show you our design. So we have a grid we are dividing into two equal equal uh, rows. So one will take the analog clock, uh, the other one will take the digital clock right here and all that information down right here. Okay, so that's our grid. And right in our grid, uh, the first thing we want to do uh, is to create the layout for our analog clock and with that we have a grid that is 250 uh, width and 250 height according to our clock here if we select this uh, is around 250 this is 238 we're going to use 250 so our parent grid is going to be 250 and it's going to be centered horizontally and uh, 
vertically we're going to make it to shift towards the end of the of the grid so we set the vertical option to end so i moves down i'll set some margin here okay so the next thing now is the canvas that's going to hold the clock so we're going to make use of the SketchUp plugin that we installed so the SketchUp that we install has a as SK, SK canvas view, giving it the name, and we want to undo the paint surface uh, events. Okay, so I'm going to resolve this namespace by adding uh, the namespace for SketchUp. That's right up there. Okay, so and uh, before we go here, let's make sure that this is properly handled against the definition. Okay, so right there is where we're going to be doing all our uh, drawing on the canvas. But before we leave this place, we have some other things to do in Azamio. Uh, if you look at our design, we have, uh, we have a small portion here that is showing uh, the second and of the, the second information of the clock. So uh, we're going to use a frame. And inside a the frame, there will be a label inside it. So, and th this will come right on top of this surface. Because every other thing that we're going to draw is going to be on in the surface, but we want this to come right on the surface. Now we're going to set the width and the height, set the shadow, uh, the background back, background color, uh, set some margin, and the text right inside we have uh, a name for it, seconds and seconds uh, text rather, uh, fonts, the text color, and other properties. Okay, so that is for our the design for our clock that is the analog uh, clock then the next one is uh, the design for yeah the digital clock right here so uh, that is fairly uh, simple we have uh, a stack layout that contains all this uh, label and also here we have a stack layout that contains the label a box view and a pancake view so and that's when we go. So we're going to have another grid inside this the grid that is in this other part, and uh, divide it into two also. Okay. So let's start with that. Um, okay. So right here, we have a grid that is going to the second row, and this grid is also divided into two uh, different rows, and the first row will contain the Exactly out for the digital clock. Uh, as you can see here, just stack together uh, the time, the period, and then the alarm text. That's going to say uh, five hours to the next alarm or something. Then the next thing is the stack layout that contains uh, the information to swipe to cancel. So right here, I have a, I have a stack layout inside. I have a label called swipe to cancel. Then a grid. That is holding a box view. Box view is that is showing the line, and uh, then this packet view is the slider. That's a small slider, a slider uh, knob that you're seeing there. Okay, so that's about it for uh, the design of uh, in in the Zamel. So let's go to the main page of Zamel.cs, where we'll write the code for the um clock okay so the first thing i want to do is uh right here i need to create a a property called parts uh that's the part because we're going to i will have to draw the part i use this part later on so let's say sk part i solve the next phase using sketchup and also uh the length of my hack is uh, 105 and this arc, this arc right here, the length is 105. So I just want to declare the field right up here. It's going to be of type float. Okay. Then uh, the last thing is the date, the, is to create an alarm. 
So we want our alarm, our alarm to be 8 p.m. every day. So I'll create a few here called alarm, alarm dates. And inside there, I want it to get to always get uh, the alarm uh, information. So in the in the method, what you're just going to have is uh, a date, you know, to check to create the instance of a, a, a new date and set the the time to uh, 8 15 p.m. every day. So it's going to take the current date and set the alarm to 8 15 p.m. of that day. And if the time currently is a, is uh, greater than uh, 8 15 it's going to set the alarm to the next day so that's what this uh, method is doing okay so now that we have done that let's start design our clock so the first thing is to get the uh info from the surface so uh there's this image info uh that is the image info that is coming from uh, our view so we're going to get it from this uh, argument and get the info out like this then we want to get the surface that we are we are painting on the the surface will be also taken from the um arguments right here then the next thing is to now get our canvas then the canvas is going to be taken from the surface itself okay so now we need this info later on to know to get the uh image info uh, the width, the height of uh, the, the uh, image that the canvas is going to render eventually. Means. For you to use colors in SketchUp, you need to use something called SK Paint. Right? So right here, every time you, you need a paint, you have to call the SK Paint and you pass in several parameters like the, the style, the, the stroke width, the color and the light. So instead of having to call this every time, I've created a method to pass the style, the color, the stroke, the cap, the, the, the stroke cap uh, type, and other information. And anytime you need a, 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 uh, a paint, just call this method and pass in the uh, proper parameter instead of having to repeat this same set line of code every time. Okay, so um, right, right here, I want to define all my paints, so they are just different paints that I've set, different colors and uh, calling this method to generate different types of, of uh, paint color for me and I'll be using this for this for the uh, hack, uh, this is the dots, this is the power hand, the minute hand and this is going to be our background uh, color. Okay, so the next thing we want to, we're going to do is to clear our canvas uh, so that is this canvas right here that is where you're going to draw on so canvas that's clear so whatever it's there is going to clear off we're going to do a new design okay so next thing is to now get the we want to create a rectangle where the um, the information is going to be drawn so each rectangle, so the, for, the, the, the first one we want to do is actually to draw both the uh, the hack and the background color. So the, the background, that is the rounded uh, the circle for the clock. Okay, so we're going to define the rectangle for each of them called SK Rect. So we have SK Rect, uh, this is the, for the hack and this is for the background, set to the new uh, instance of, of SK Rect. Now here we are saying we should start from, so from left, we want you to start from 10 uh, points to uh, on the left and 10 points at the top. That's, that's the, this 10, 10. And the essence of that is so that we are able to create a, a, a kind of uh, uh, padding for our for our uh, for the for the drawing so what we're doing is so you can see these are uh, saying we actually start from and we actually end from so we are taking the the width and the height and we're subtracting 10 so this all with this would do is to create uh, a padding of 10 all around the, the uh, rectangle 
and we are taking this width if you look at the uh, main page here the width of our, our main container will be 250 so which means that we'll be having uh, about 210 our, our rectangle will be about 210 having taken 10 point 10 points from each side okay so the same thing with the background the background uh we're making it 25 so that um there will be distance between the hack and the and the background circle now that, that is done then we're going to draw our background this is how to draw the background so we'll call the canvas we we'll call the draw over background of the of the canvas and passing the rectangle it's, it's going to take uh, a, a, a scale rect and the paint so for the hack before we draw the hack we want to create a gradient because if you look at our our hack right here it's actually a gradient on like this so we want to make it use of a gradient uh, so to do that we're going to use the stroke paint here and create a gradient from it so we are going to use that by taking the shader property of the stroke paint and create a, a linear gradient and passing we have to start it's going to start from the left top and then to end at the right bottom then we're going to pass in our colors so we want this to go from uh, this darker pink to transparent just like you see in this prototype then uh, the next thing is uh, the offset. Where it's going to start from and where it's going to where it's going to end from. I mean, that's the offset for each of this color. So this color starts from zero, and this color ends at one. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is now to draw the hack uh, to set the property of the hack, just like we have uh, before we draw it. So uh, we're going to use the parts that we created right up here and uh, set the arc to we want to draw the hat we want the hack to be inside this the arc rect that we have created up here then the start angle we want the start angle to start at 45 we are going to use the arc length we want it to move uh, for 105 so it means that it's going to go from 45 and go and go to one 105 uh, and the reason there is if you had this together you see that 105 plus 45 is 150 and um, it means that our angle is going to be 150 right from here so if you start from 0 90 uh, from here to here is 60 degrees if you add 60 to 90 that is 10 that's 150 so that's how we got to this point okay so now uh, we want to start to do start drawing the clock itself so before we do that we have to do some scaling for our canvas so what we want to do is I want to take the width and the height and you know translate this to the center and then scale it to 200 to the width divided by 200 so what we are trying to do is we are bringing the the uh center of the canvas to the middle and scale it out so that everything that we are going to draw is going to start from the middle of the of the canvas because we want the end of the of the clock to come from the middle and go to the edge end of to the edge of the clock so that is why we have to do this scaling and uh, the next one to do is to now draw the dots first of all save the canvas the information on the canvas then we rotate our canvas to 40 degrees then draw a circle the circle starts from uh, zero we want it to move to minus uh, 75 on the x axis 
from the circle then we want the radius of the, of the circle to be 2 so and we're passing the paint that will give us that dot and we are rotating this to 240 because our dot is at angle 240 so if you start from here this is 0 this is 90 this is 180 180 plus 60 that is 240 that's why our angle is going to be here so we save we draw we, we rotate we draw the circle then we restore the canvas back so that anything we want to draw will start from uh the zero degree back okay so having done that uh we want to start to draw the clock now okay, so uh what i'm going to do is start with a the time clock we're going to be using this uh, to get the current date then i want to draw the hand the hour hand during the hour hand we follow what we have been doing before so first of all save the canvas then we want to rotate the canvas to a degree now we are doing some calculation here um, how your hour hand is always at uh, the angle 30 so normally you should have just multiplied 30 with whatever hour we have so if we have uh, if our hour is 1 uh, it's going to be our hour is going to be at, at uh, 30 degrees if it is 0 hour is going to be at zero degrees uh, but we have to add this together so that by the time the clock is ticking you know if you if you have uh, if, if your clock is at say 2 30 pm you notice that your, the hour hand will be in between 2 and 3 so that's why we have to do this add this other uh, this other part to it you check the minute and divide it by 2 so that it will always be uh, at the appropriate uh, point okay so we're drawing the line we make the line to start at zero and uh, start at zero on the x-axis and start at uh, five on the y-axis then move at zero on the x-axis then move at minus 60 on the y-axis so we ask it to start uh, from five because we want the we want the hour hand and the in hand to overlap just like this. So we start from five. This will start from something like ten. Uh, then move to the middle. Then now move to the negative to negative uh, direction. Okay. So that is for our hour hand, and we are making use of the date time dot hour. Uh, think date time dot minute. So we're going to use this to do the same for our minute hand. It follows the same pattern. And also we're going to uh, now draw the dot that is on on the hour hand and the minute hand. So let's let's draw a circle. We're going to make the radius of one make it at the center. A radius to be five so that we have this dot in the middle right here okay so the next thing we want to do is to get the date time out uh, and put it on our text so these are simple things i'm just gonna paste some information right here but what we are doing is we're taking the second and and passing to the, our second uh, text label yeah, the same thing with the time with this format then the period if it's if the hour is greater than 12 then we are pm which is not then we are am then of course to do the time that is left to alarm we are taking our alarm date that we declared right off here and subtracting it uh, the, the current time from it then we pass in the hour and the minute that is left for the uh, for the alarm okay so if we run this right now we will see that uh, we're going to have our clock but there's going to be a challenge with it
as you can see we have the current clock 16 a.m as at few minutes few seconds ago but nothing is moving so this time was correct some few minutes ago and we already have our design uh, almost ready as you can see so now the next thing we want to do is to make sure that uh, this time is this clock is always correct I want these seconds to always count and the hours to uh, the next alarm should also change then this swipe to cancel should also animate so as you can see it's already 6 11 pm and this time has not changed so let's handle that so to handle that we are going to make use of a timer and um, I'm going to put that here I'm going to use, make use of two timers the first one is to undo the um, the drawing and the other one is to undo the uh, swiping the, the swipe animation okay so the one will undo the clock and uh, the other one will undo the swipe animation so you're going to make use of the device the start timer you're passing a time span from seconds once it's a fraction uh, uh, one one six sixty of every second so and the reason is okay so normally you should think that every um, every second uh, moves at uh, one second so once we are doing from second a normally it's supposed to pass in one so that it's got to, to be taken it should be taken every second but we are making use of uh, millisecond air because we want a smooth a smooth transition between the second and the minute so as, you, as it, by the time it's changing you see a smooth slide instead of just a tick all right so and the only thing we just need to do is to invalidate the, the surface of the canvas so that it will redraw itself everyone uh, at, at this period at this fraction of second okay and then we return then the other timer that we're going to do is to set the slider so we're taking our slider as we created here we can still remember this pancake view that's a slider we're taking our slider we're translating it to minus 80 that is for it to start at the beginning then animate it to slide to 80 on the x axis uh it should spend 80 800 milliseconds and the using should be linear so and lo looking at it this place our timer is from milliseconds want it to, to tick every uh 1000 milliseconds I, I think that's like every second yeah uh, animate this guy right there so let's run this and see Yes, as you can see now we have our clock and our second is updating. We can see the animation saying we should swipe to cancel. You can run the same uh, uh, application on your Android and um, and iOS application. It's going to look exactly uh, the same. All right, thank you very much for watching this video. But before you go, I want you to watch these next two videos that are, that are going to help you. Uh, make sure you watch them before you go like this video by giving the thumbs up click on that like button at the bottom and also subscribe if you are here to do so help me to show this video to more people that's what you are doing and subscription is free you're not paying any money for it uh, so please do that thank you very much and i will see you next time